Hello, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to be painting a Picasso-esque little cardboard cutout mask thing. Um, there's also a terminology called cubism, and I didn't know anything about Picasso before I saw this, and of course I saw it on Pinterest first, um, thinking probably when I was searching for painting ideas to do my table, the table that I just finished. Um, the colors are what attract me. Uh, I've, I've wood burned, I have these on my desk to show you. I did these little tiki faces in wood burning, but the color is what really drew me to these. Now, I wanted to just share a little bit about Picasso. I, I really didn't know much about him. I'm a creator, I'm not a painter. I'm an artist. Anyway, um, this is the only thing I printed out. I have a few things on my phone, but what Picasso liked to do was he was an abstract artist. And I'll come in a little bit. I know you can't really see this. And I think this is called The Woman and My... For some reason, my, uh, my battery's running low, so I hope... I have it plugged in, but I hope everything's going to keep going. Um, he... Instead of just painting a portrait the way the woman was sitting, so say if she was if she was profile, oh that's not good. You know he painted her, you know the side of her face and her eye and everything, but then he started to add another eye looking sideways. So he had the profile and the forward view. So in other words, here's what he did. This is called the woman with the red hair or something like that. I'll show you a couple more on my phone. But it starts out a little bit more portrait. I mean, I'm sorry, um, profile. He has this eye facing that way and then this eye is facing forward. So it's, I can see it being like he doesn't want to just only do the port, um, the profile. He wants to, us to know that it is rounded. And then cubism kind of went a step further and decided to just use literal shapes. So this is the piece that I did off the internet. I just copied this exactly how it was and I'll try to put a link for the in the description box for Pinterest for this. I'm just hoping I don't unplug and not notice it. Um, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> because for you guys, those of you who have watched my channel a little while, you know that I was a decorative painter for years, and in decorative painting, we use a pattern. We use someone else's design, and they tell you what to do, and then I recreate basically the thing that they created. So for me, this is what gives me serenity. I don't have to think. That being said, I did this one by myself. So this one I did, I think, Friday. I just cut up a piece of cardboard. See, this is all cardboard. Um, and to me, I didn't use any pictures as reference at all. I've, I've been, I looked at it online previously, but I didn't have anything that I was following, per se. You know what I mean? Just started cutting up shapes. <coughs> and what I, find, what I found was this really looks... A little too um, proportionate you know there's not enough oblongy stuff like yeah I made the eyes wonky but it still looks pretty straightforward as a face goes right um, anyway I liked it it was fun anyway so today I'm gonna paint I'm gonna do a different one with you guys um, I've already cut out all the shapes because that's really the time-consuming part of this and I'm following another design that I found on Pinterest so that I don't have to think. And it's more, if you look at it, like they're ha it's a half circle, right? And I had to put enough room behind it for it to glue on the back. And I'm just going to use Weld Bond. I have Weld Bond here in a little squirty thing. And I'm just going to glue this together with you. But, you know, if you look at the shape, so this was like an oval. And then they, I just cut a little notch out of it for the mouth. You'll see it better when I start painting. The nose was a weird shape. It kind of looks like a boot, but again, I followed a pattern, and so it's not exact. But a lot, and they have triangles, so you'll see as we get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these little shapes from underneath, and I'm going to 
try and make them kind of turn. So the next one, I'm going to try and make it turn. I have four of them. Hold on, this one. So in other words, this should be... I'm going to cut it a little bit. I'm using my Tim Holtz tonic scissors because this was a, like, cardboard is really hard to cut. Um, this thick cardboard, I got this from Chewy, I think it's called. I ordered something from there. That's probably good enough. And then I had one more of them. I'm going to try and put it a little closer, so I'm just cutting off. So that I could place it a little closer, that it looks proportionate. And again, I don't think any of that matters. So just get it on there and you're good to go. So that's kind of the head or the top portion. The hair, maybe. I don't know. And I'm just wiping away the glue because then I can paint better. So let me put the, the mouth on because that'll give me a little... Um, I'll know how far up I can go because this was kind of put down a little and it was off to the side. I like that. I don't know how well you're going to, but once I start painting, it's all going to come into play. And I'm just going to start placing the features on the piece. For the eyes, I have the ears. Let me do an ear. They're going to be behind it too. But for the eyes, I have a layered situation going. Um, I did my best. I didn't trace this one. The other one that I did, I literally just traced it from the... Um, I think I want to make it like that. I traced it from a picture that I printed out. I literally printed out the um, pattern. All right, and then the eyes have these kind of like, they overlap like, yay, good. I wanted them to come off the side a little bit, but then they also overlapped. So I'm going to try and put this. So this is the stuff I don't really think of. Because I've never made, uh oh, I wasn't thinking and I put it on the wrong side. Um, I just don't need glue because it's going to be hanging off. I want glue on this side. Okay. Um, yeah, and this one could have been turned more up like, boy, weld bond really sticks. So once it's on there, it's kind of on there. It's just paper though, so, and I, this is ridiculous that I do this, but I am, I guess I am a little bit of a perfectionist. I thought I was a good enough, but maybe I'm not a good enough. Let's see. I wanted it to go more up this way. Okay, I like that better. So it kind of, I don't know. And this is how I'm saying it. It's looking peoply. He's got these eyeballs now. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put this one on this. Alexa, turn on the craft fan. And when I paint it, it should all come together. But this is really fun for maybe for you and your grandkids to do. I miss Maya. I don't get to do any kid crafts anymore. She's 15. She doesn't want to do this stuff. But when she was little, she definitely did. And it was super fun. We get to get messy. Um, so there's the eyes. I have these little triangles that are kind of glued on the cheek. And I'm going to put them right here. And 
there's like eyelashes these little eyelashy oopsie now when we paint it we're going to be able to doodle and do what we want to it as well so I didn't cut holes in this there were holes the ear probably has a hole in it this little triangle seems like it had a hole in it but I didn't want to fudge with it because the um, cardboard is quite difficult to work with it's a little it's hard and then these little eyelashy things go right here and I mean that looks good and then there's these two half circle-y things that go right here and I think that's going to be it like there's nothing over here see on mine when I did this this seemed kind of open because this wasn't on the original pattern so I just put a triangle there so I mean I'm sure I'll I'll fudge something up here and I was thinking I could put I'm just going to paint them but let me glue this in place And again, this is called Weld Bond, this glue. They didn't used to, but now I'm pretty sure they sell it at Michael's. Because um, I got this when I first started doing mosaics. And this is a while back before I recently... Re Oop, wait a minute, I didn't do these yet. Restarted my mosaic work. But um, it's a great white glue. And I just I got this little squirt bottle from... Uh, a class I took and again I'm just wiping the glue off the surface because I'm going to paint and it just looks neater and I just had all these paints out from when I finished my um, my table so that's what I'm going to use so you can see it's kind of dimensional and let's just get started I like to paint from the top down so that um, whatever I get like if I were to paint this I'm sure I'd get paint on it like I'd mess up and now here this is the hard part for me because I have no color reference to go by so I'm just gonna wing it I could put these going down too I might want to do that I'm gonna change it up and do that a little bit too because I just feel like Something could go there, you know what I mean? What do you think? I like it. I like it. I think I want to do that because, of course, it's... Even though I am making something that was already made and copied, I'm copying it. Now I'm making it my own by adding a little something. And... You no. Know, realizing that it doesn't have to be just like the picture that's important whoops for my creativity to oopsie making a mess all right i'm gonna start painting I have a bunch of bright colors so I'm gonna just start I'm gonna start with white and just work my way down all I'm gonna use is like a I think I have a filbert brush that I'm using this is a filbert and it's actually a pretty good one so let me switch to like a more messed up one this one's better for that okay and then this is a good old Donna Dewberry one stroke brush that I've had forever but you can't kill these things because when she created her um, program one stroke she really loads up the brush uh, full of paint and so that those brushes were created for her to do one stroke and they are indestructible 
anyway so I'm putting out some white and this is by Delta Ceram Coat it's just called white and I'm just gonna I'm not even going into water this is so far from what I would normally do I would always put water in my brush and I'm just gonna go really thick because it's it could take a couple coats to get opaque and I like it to look opaque but that's just my preference because if you were doing this with kids you could use watercolors you could use colored pencils you could use sharpies to color this you could just doodle on it you don't even have to color it in completely um, but just let your creative side come out let your playful side um, just come out and be free and enjoy the process be in the moment with it be present and kind of let your thoughts go um, I don't really put white and then what I've been doing is instead of going right into my water I kind of pull the paint off the brush so that I don't get my water totally full of paint and I just rinse it and then I'm gonna choose another color got to use fuchsia. I think I want to keep the background colors kind of light. I'm going to put out some of this um, turquoise. And some of this purple. This is called Pansy Lavender. Such a pretty purple. But I have another pretty purple too. And I'm just going to start putting it places. Should I do my lips pink on this one? I think I'm going to do the lips pink. I did my lips red on my other one. I mean, he could have green lips. That's okay. That's not the point. The point is to just make it colorful. The thing that Picasso, there was another painting, I think I've... I've done this before on my sun or my moon. I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see. When you do a sun or a moon and you go like this. And then you make eyes on both sides. So it's kind of like a forward view and a profile view. Have you ever seen that? I think that's probably along the lines of like picasso -y or cubism they call it i'm gonna make um some more pink i like to do at least two or three but i think i'm gonna make this one pink that's what i because i don't have i'm not going to use a different color on every shape so i'm just going to keep moving around the piece i could do it in threes like i could do this ear or maybe one of these but first let me just get a few colors down let me put the blue down I love this turquoise and it's just called true turquoise it's just called turquoise blue and this is Americana it's so pretty though oh man and it paints really nice like I think that's what I like about it too see it just covers I might only need one other coat and then I think I'll do, see I could do both ears the same color, or I think I'm gonna do these. And that, I mean, they don't have to both be the same. Yeah, I'm gonna make them both the same. And these are the decisions that you make, and I am really learning a lot about sometimes decisions aren't that important so don't think too hard about it because i think i've been afraid to make decisions a lot in my life and then things go i don't make the choice i just i nothing happens so in this case this is a safe place to make decisions and just be happy regardless nothing's going to happen nothing's going to happen if i put a color down like the i love all of these colors so you see what I'm saying? It's a safe place to make a decision. And yeah, I moved that piece of cardboard. You know, it's not like I can change it if I need to, but I'm trying to let myself accept what's happening right now. I think I'm gonna make this.
and again I keep going to the baby wipe and pulling most of the paint off and then I rinse it just so that I'm not getting my water super muddy um, I need a little bit of green and I love this this is called citron no olive green what other colors I have dark blues um, orange red mm. Where's that light purple? Let me just do the green first. I'm going to do... I think for me, it's the color that really brings it together. See how I'm getting green on the on the bottom layer on the face? That's why I want to do these first. Cuz I'll go over everything and touch it up, but I knew I was going to make a mess on the bottom. And There is a, let's see, I, I'm just going to look at my, the picture for a sec, because they did divide it in an interesting way, and I kind of like it. It has a divider right here, so that's going to be a certain color. And then, see, I can't, I'm just going to leave that, but there is a line. It's kind of cubed around that shoot. Um... Hmm. I think I am going to do it. Because it kind of cubes in that eyeball. And then there's a line here. And then it goes down. I think that's it. Um, there's one over here. So that's just like a random square there. Can you see how I... You'll see. Um, let me get some of this, where's that other purple? Here it is. This is called Wisteria. I'm going to put that I'm sure I could have made all four of these little round things the same color. I'm not sure if that would have looked better. I don't know. I'm going to make these triangles. I'm going to make them both the same color. Still have to do these eyebrow things. The ear, the ear, these two, maybe these three will be all the same color. And I think I might use that. I love sapphire blue. What other color do I have that I really want to use? I have red. Um, and red does look pretty nice. I do like red. I've been kind of using pastels instead of the um, traditional. I have orange. Orange is not as opaque, but I think I'll use orange on the background. So I think I'm going to use the sapphire. Oops, sapphire. Oopsie. But I could paint the eyes blue. Ooh. Maybe I'll, um, I have one blue eye guy. I could do brown eyes. So let's see. I'm going to do this ear. Isn't the color the best part? I don't know. Look at this. This is even getting gorgeous. <laughs> um, yeah, let me rinse this off. Go back into the white. 
I just really like my white to be opaque. That should be good. And then I'll put some eyeballs on. And I think I am going to make the eyeballs that blue. So I have to use something for the eyelids. Um, I haven't used yellow. Yellow is this yellow, and I've undercoated everything with, I undercoated it with white. But I do like that. It could be pretty popping in the back of those eyelids. I think I might do that. So I'm going to just put this yellow out on top of this puddle of white and just it'll mix a little bit because it's just not opaque. This is a very sheer yellow. I'm going to use this, oops, my round brush because so just that little bit of white which eh, I think I gotta add a little bit more. It just changes the pigment enough that it like is less translucent and um, the next coat I'll make straight yellow and it'll really See, this is like really lightening it up, like dulling the, the brightness, the, the, um, yeah. But it, but what I'm saying, you'll, you'll see what I mean. This is going to cover the other, the yellow, just the straight yellow. I would have needed to put so many more coats. Pink is another color oftentimes, red a lot of times too. To get the true color, you need to undercoat it with white. And I could have done that. I wasn't even thinking that because I didn't know I was going to put yellow here, but I could have just painted this whole thing white and then let it dry and then just go ahead on top of it with the yellow. And I'm just going to do that anyway, but I just used a mixture. How's that looking? Good? So I'm focused. I'm focused on what I'm doing. And it also, it's like, it's a messier, like I'm a pretty neat painter generally. So this has worked up so fast. I was able to just come in here last night after dinner and just play for an hour or two. Joe was doing stuff. He had to get ready for a meeting today. And, you know, I just came in here and sat down and played. And it was just so relaxing. I'm so glad I'm getting back to it. I'm going to start putting some color on the background. I think I'm going to use red and orange. I think I want to put red up here for some reason. And then I think I'll do red in two places or maybe just one. I don't know. And again, I might want to, I'm just going to go straight red, but you'll see what I mean because it might not be opaque. You'll be able to see through it for sure. Let me think what I want to do with this. Um, there's a little section here. I think I'm going to do these two sections. I don't know why. So I might have to break out the smaller brush. I went over the line already. Yeah, because this is not a flat. It has a rounded edge or like chisel. I'm not able to uh, get the straight edges the way I normally would with a flat brush. But I don't want to mess up my flats because I'm loading these up so much. I'm really abusing this brush right now. I don't know if you know that, but I, because I'm just really loading it up a lot and I'm jamming it in here and I'm really rinsing it off hard. Like I'm just not being gentle. I just wanted to choose a brush that I was 
going to be able to abuse and not really regret it. Um, I kind of am regretting it because I don't have a lot of filberts, but I'm going to go in between these. So, there we go. And then I'm going to do this little piece down here. I don't know why. Yeah, I think I watched a couple of uh, tutorials on this on YouTube. And the one lady was using watercolors, and so her, of course, her painting was more washy. It wasn't as opaque, but I'm, I'm using acrylic paint, and I like it opaque, but that doesn't mean yours has to be, or you even have the same supplies. You could color this, you know, with crayons or whatever. I'm going to use orange, and this isn't exactly opaque either. But we're going to go for it. And this is called pumpkin, spice pumpkin. So I, this is just what I had in my stash. And I thought they were nice, bright colors. So let's see how. This is very sheer. I should have definitely mixed white with this. This is going to take a lot of coats. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to get this all finished. And then I'm going to come back and do the details with you with my Posca paint pens. That was really fun. I got to pull out another medium, another media, whatever you want to say. Um, that I've had in my stash and use and Posca paint pens are I think they're made in Japan or China um, but they're a very nice acrylic paint in there they flow real nice um, I discovered them when I was doing a lot more mixed media and they've held up and they're just awesome I'm so happy I got to use them again uh, do I want to use orange again? And then I have two more spots that I could do. I think I'm going to do that. You can always change it. Like there's pencil lines on here from when I cut out the the head and it'll get covered. It'll get covered with paint. And they're jaggedy lines from cutting because like it's just cardboard, so. I got orange on the purple. It's all right, because I haven't done second coats on anything yet. Let me change brushes. So that's where I clean everything up in my second coat, and I just be more careful. The first coat, I'm just kind of getting it on there, and then I'll clean it all up in my second coat. Or with my second coat. Maybe even possibly a third coat. See, this is a project anyone can do. You just need only a, you could go to the dollar store and spend five bucks. Not even. You just need scissors. And I would get those like kitchen scissors. I don't know. These, this car, I'm telling you, this cardboard is much harder than I expected. Um, and some paints or some crayons or something. And you're good to go and your imagination so you don't even need five bucks just a piece of cardboard bugging me right there 
All right, so I'm going to go off camera and get this all painted and finished in solid color, and I'll be right back, and we'll do the details. All right, I'm back, and it's actually the next day. I'm not sure that I love the yellow eyebrows, but, you know, and I used a darker color there. So, like, for instance, this is all just bright, and then I add the dark, and it just, I don't know. So... I'm going to remedy that with my Posca paint pens. And these are, it's called Uni, U-N-I. Alexa, cancel. She thought I was talking to her. These are a 0.7 millimeter. It's all in Japanese or Chinese, but they're awesome. I'm going to just dump them, and let's make some detail lines. So, I gave them brown eyes. I did use the black and just kind of put the ear marks in there, and a lip... Um, that's about it but for what I want to do first I think I'm gonna do some stripey lines on I'm gonna use purple I think I'm gonna kind of go like this you know this reminds me too of Zentangle that's another uh, medium I don't know you call it a medium um, another type of art that I really found very um, therapeutic, you know what I mean? Like very relaxing because it's basically doodle doodling, but kind of in an organized fashion. I think there is something to it when I feel it can't just be random in, in some ways, but in some ways it can. So let's see what that looks like. I don't know if they look eyebrow eyebrowish. <laughs> Let me use some. Oh, I never did a white dot for his eye. You know what? I never did that on this guy either. Oops. I probably should just made sure it was flowing. That's the only. You have to pump the kind of push the nib down and just make sure that the ink is flowing. Um, it's not ink. It's paint. And um. But these are very, very, um, these, I've had these for a while. So, I mean, and they're working just fine. I'm going to put this one down here. Um, I think I want to do, maybe I'll do like a line here. I don't know. I've not studied a lot of different, um, Painting faces and stuff like that. What color do I want to use now? This blue. I want to put something bright on the green. Let's do yellow. So I'll bring the yellow to the green. And I'm just going to do it with a line. And they don't have to touch necessarily. They can skip. Jenny, I mean, yeah, Jenny just came in to nudge me. Thanks, Jen. Um, I think I want to go down the side too. Oh, I forgot to do something with the um, these purple. I think I want to make a darker purple. There's so much you can do. Um, all types of doodles. There's no wrong. You're not going to... You know, now this brown, I would like like a light brown, or maybe, I, I, I bet you this is really very close to that color brown, the brown of the eye. I used um, my favorite, uh, burnt sienna. Let's go with red. Now I'm going to use this light pink. I love pink and orange, so let me just use, I'm going to use this pink. I could be making swirlies or triangles or anything you want. Hash, hash marks. Um, but for some reason, the line is just working just fine for me. And again, use whatever you have. If you you could use um, glitter pens, those metallic pens. I haven't broken out my pens in so long. Um, for some reason, I want to go with, see, I don't have a dark fuchsia, but I think I want to make a line inside these black circles in the same or similar color. Oh, 
to make sure that ink is flowing or else it just kind of comes out as like watery like it hasn't been just like when you shake your paint in the in the bottle you want to mix the, the all the stuff together I have purple I don't have a light purple but I'll use this purple doesn't really show up that well I have a dark blue but I'm gonna use this light blue Uh oh see again I've been putting down paper on my desk top just because um, I'm getting it in shipments of things like when they're doing packaging it's sometimes it's used as stuffing in the packaging and um, I find it very helpful to have on my desk so that if I want to test something oh that was very wet I'm gonna do some circles on the ear my dogs are playing if you can't if you can hear a ruckus did I do and see I'll do dark blue on that one and I'm just gonna do a line back here because there's room but this ear I'll do the dark blue and I'll do circles so it kind of matches All right. stuff is starting to happen let me see on this light blue I think I want to do I'm going to outline it to use um, I'll use the brown to outline the eye it's not coming though okay that's good these also dry pretty fast I don't tend to make too many smudges although as I'm saying that I think I just smudged a blue over here but not too bad and it is paint, so I'm just using a um, Q-tip to get it off or to kind of, where was I? So, it's starting to come together. Oh, I did yellow on the green. I think I want to do different shape change it up a little bit right I like change I like both I like change and the same oh that looks cool I have to add that to the red what should I put on the red Pink shows up really well on red, but I already used it over here. That This light green will probably show up on it. Let's try that. And I think I want to do... They do kind of spatter a little bit when you... If you have a rough surface. looks cool I'm gonna do that on, I'm gonna use this green and actually it's gonna play into this but let's see I think I'll do just little dots maybe not circles but just dots it's very easy to make dots with this too I mean oopsie I got purple I got uh, green on the purple because the ink gets all around the nib Oopsie, that was a big one. I really just have to press down. I don't have to force it. What else? I think I'm going to use black. I used black in a few places. Uh-oh. How do I use... I'm going to use dark blue. I'm going to use this dark blue. I 
I, I don't even need to talk. It's very, it's very therapeutic to do this stuff. For me, I'm going to make lines inside this ear. do triangles not showing up very well I think that's the most difficult part for me is to know what colors to use that honestly is why I love decorative painting still because they those artists create their designs and they include all the colors that you would need and it's just so easy for me to do it. I want to put dark blue in here too. I've been using dark blue a lot, but I think I want to do... James might be home from the gym. Or they could just be barking at the wind. I just like to bark sometimes. And then the nose. I'll do something light on top of the nose. I could do yellow might show up nice. Let me see if I can get this green. Yellow will probably show up really nice on the purple. See, I did yellow on the green though. I'll do I'll do the light green. See the splash? I just splashed. Ooh, I like when they show up really nice. I think I've outlined everything pretty much. I just haven't done this, which I think I'm going to do. Let's just go this way. I hope you guys do this. It's such an easy way to spend an hour or two. Um, just relax, play with color and shape, and make yourself a little, and it doesn't take much. I mean, it's just a couple pieces of cardboard. What should I do for the lips? Pink. This light pink should show up. I gotta do those purple ones too. some swirls. I don't know why. It just occurred to me I could make a couple swirls. Let's do pink up here too, why not? It really makes this jump out now. That purple was getting a little lost in the green. What do you think? What else does it need? Um, I kind of want to outline the eyeballs. Oops, a little bump in the cardboard. I don't like it. Just fix that blue because it kind of leaked. <clears throat> 
Is that it, you think? There's so much more I could do. I think I want to put little black X's here. I don't know why. No idea. Probably should do something in this orange. Because <clears throat> that orange... <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'll put red. How about stars? Because this I used red. I forget how to make stars all of a sudden. They didn't turn out as good as I'd hoped. I think I'm done. I'm going to put them side by side and see what I think. <clears throat> of course, I don't know. I don't know why I say of course. Let me make sure I'm not zoomed in. What do you think? Different, but the same. I like them. I could do, I really want to use like something to, I don't know, make those eyes different. What do you think? I'm just being too critical. I think it looks good. Both of them. All right, you guys. I hope you play. I think in the next video, I'll be doing some Christmassy stuff because it is going to be December in two days. So I'll be back. Thanks for watching.